It's time for the Hockey Writers Grind Line. A weekly show covering everything Detroit Red Wings. Brought to you by our own iconic top line of Wings writers. Sit back and enjoy the grind. Welcome to the Hockey Writers Grind Line. I'm your host, Kyle Knopp, filling in for Patrick Brown. And I'm joined today with my line mate, Devin Little, and the Hockey Writers Head Prospect Correspondent, Matthew Zator. How are you doing today, Matt and Devin? Doing good, doing good. Happy to be well, here you. as always. Thank you for joining me. We're excited to have you here and uh, looking forward to chatting with you in a little bit. But first, before we get started, I want you to let you all know that this week's show is being brought to you by The Morning Skate, a daily newsletter delivered to your inbox Monday to Friday, jam-packed with the best hockey stuff on the planet. It's a daily dose of the latest NHL news, rumors, history, funnies, quizzes, and more. Just a little hockey fun and information brought to you every day of the week to your inbox for free from the Hockey Writers. You can sign up below. You'll see a link in our description uh, below and sign up today and get your morning news delivered to your inbox every day of the week. All right, so kicking off the show, we're going to start with the oldie but a goodie. We're going to start with one good, one bad from the past week or two. That was the Red Wings. Uh, They only had one game this past week, uh, lost to the Avalanche um, at home and uh, have a – plethora of games coming up this week they actually have quite the gauntlet coming up they have a game against the maple leafs the hurricanes the lightning and the panthers all within the next week so we're going to look back at what was one good one bad from this past week or two and i'll start with you devin yeah uh my one good for the week is uh you know despite the uh, final result i liked uh the red wings fight in that game against the avalanche um you know they they were the they weren't the the better team in the first period. I think I think they ended that period down two nothing, um, and then second period they came out and they really I, they they were the better team in that second period, and it just goes to show how uh, how much of a gap there is between the Avalanche and the Red Wings right now, where the Red Wings were the better team in that period, but they still closed the period down three to one. Um, so you know, despite you know really giving this team a uh, a um, you know a headache. Um, and you know, that, that, that could have, uh, a lesser team, a, you know, Red Wings teams from a couple of years ago would have taken that and taken that as defeat and it would have snowballed big time and, uh, it didn't happen. And that's been a trend this season. It's, 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 uh, it's been really exciting to see. I, I love, love their fight. Now, as for my one bad, um, <laughs> you just kind of mentioned it. Uh, wait, they had one game this week <laughs> and, you know, you're sitting here waiting, just, you know, when, when are the wings playing Wednesday? All right. Well, what do I do till then? All right. So they play their one game. Now we wait. And then who's up next? Toronto. All right. Well, then who's after that? <laughs> Carolina. Oh, oh, all right. Well, then who's after that? <laughs> Florida, Tampa Bay. Can I get a break? Oh, no, this, this is, uh, this is when, uh, the Red Wings are going to earn their, uh, earn their stripes one way or mm-hmm. another. So, uh, stay tuned for next week's episode to see, see how it turned out for the Red Wings. <laughs> Great insight. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. Uh, My bad. That was going to be for sure. The upcoming schedule looking into the future. uh, You know, like you said, the first period could be looked at as a bad. They came out pretty flat. I thought you, again, they recovered really well. The second period was definitely a good. um, So I totally agree with you there, but yeah, that upcoming schedule, like I said, is a gauntlet. And like you said, is going to be the test of the season. Absolutely. Matthew, how about you? One good, one bad from this past week, whether it's the Red Wings or what you saw across the NHL. Well, I'm I'm gonna echo the the fact of the big schedule coming up and the amount of crazy opponents that the Red Wings are gonna have to deal with. And I can echo that with the Canucks when they had to go through that uh, hell week and uh, didn't come out very well with that either. So I mean, these are strong teams, and you never know. We probably get maybe get some blowouts there. It's like. Yeah, it, it, that's always a bad. It's a bad thing having to deal with those teams one after another, with no break, and especially when you have had such a big break um, between games. So that's definitely a bad for me in that. And my good comes from my world in the Canucks world and uh, them breaking the Calgary Flames' <laughs> ten-game winning streak, stopping from their franchise record eleven. 
and did it in spectacular fashion, a seven to one uh, blowout. So that's uh, good in my books. And uh, yeah, that, that, that was my biggest one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pedersen, Horvat, and yeah. JT Miller all had yeah. a pair of goals in that last night, which uh, is quite astonishing all coming from one team and against the tough team in the Calgary flames, one of the hottest teams in the NHL right now. So uh, yeah, that's I, as a Canuck fan, as someone that follows and writes for the Canucks, um, all you other Canuck fans out there, you know, you have some, some of you are second <laughs> tier, you know, or not second tier, but second team, West coast teams, Canucks check out uh, Mr. Zator's uh, his writings about the Canucks and they'll go in more about how they shut down the red hot flames team. Uh, so moving forward, we're going to strap on our GM hats again this week uh, for the first segment. We're going to talk about a trade deadline. We're going to set the price for our Detroit Red Wings trade pieces. So how much are you looking to get in return for Vlad Menestikov, uh, Nick Letty, or anyone else that might be on your list? So I want to hear someone, maybe two or three players that you're looking to really shop this year and then what your expected return is. And Matt, we will start with you. Well, I mean, the Red Wings are definitely going to be selling uh, some assets off uh, come the trade deadline. I mean, they put they put some good fight into the playoff push. I mean, being surprisingly where they are in the standings, um, a lot of people didn't think they would even be knocking on any playoff doors. So. But, I mean, now the East is pretty much set, I think, in the playoff race. They will be selling some guys. So, I mean, I'm looking at Nick Letty as my biggest for the Red Wings because, I mean, he's a veteran presence. Uh, he's one guy that can help a playoff team, uh, maybe push him over the top, whatever. I mean, he can play in the top four on a really good team, you know, being on, even on the second or third pairing. That's huge. So, I think the Red Wings could d definitely get a first-round pick. Um, out of him because of that. I mean, the price at the deadline always goes up. Uh, mm -hmm. I say Letty's at least, a, at least, at the very least, a second round um, pick you'd want to get for him. Um, maybe even a mid range prospect. You never know. But uh, a guy like that and, and looking like Nemesnikov, another guy that's a, you know, playoff ready type guy. And, uh, he could be in the bottom six, play that uh, third line center role on a team and uh, even being on the fourth line, I mean, a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning didn't get him back, <laughs> you know, he was there. So, it, and I, I don't know, first round pick would be too much for him uh, wanting that, but again, second, third round or anything that the Wings can get in this draft um, to increase what their rebuild is already accelerated. Like you guys have mentioned on the show before, but those are the two guys that kind of look at a definite trade bait. I um, wanted to throw in Sam Gagne as another guy as well. Mm -hmm. And he's yep. played really well for the Red Wings this yeah. year. And um, saw him at the Canucks a bit and uh, thought he was going to be a big piece here, but never happened. Um, but yeah, I, he's another guy again. Um, third rounder maybe for him, a mid-range prospect. But uh, yeah, Red Wings are going to be getting some good assets for, for these guys, I think. Excellent insight. And for those of you that are familiar with our show, you know that we like to take those predictions and, and kind of summarize them for you. And as Matt's one of our editors, or the, or the editor in our show, he knows how this works. So uh, there you go. Matt is saying a first round for Letty, or sorry, two first rounds for Letty, a first round for Nemestikov, and uh, two seconds for Ganya. There we go. All right. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think you have you make some valid points. I think yeah, the price definitely goes up at the at the trade deadline, and I think we're all expecting Letty's kind of already got a foot out the door. Um, but again, we kind of thought that way with Mark Stahl last season, and and that didn't happen either. But if we could get a first for Letty, even a second and a, a prospect or something, I think that would be a great return. Uh, Devin, how about you? Who are your pieces and how high are you getting in return? Because I'm making it higher, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you threw me for a loop there for a second. Uh, like, that's not what he really said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, oh, man, did you mishear him? No, oh, oh, we're doing this. We're this game. I got you. I can play ball. It just be um, me and uh, the 50 goals, you know. It's got to yes, be more than yes, that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, Matt uh, did a pretty good summary of uh, what, you know, the biggest trade pieces are, I agree. I think Letty is kind of the, uh, the biggest one. 
Um, the the thing I want to point to is that the Red Wings traded a second round pick to New York to get him in the first place. I think that is the bare minimum you, you'd want to get yeah. that return on invest or yeah that re- that investment back basically for him. Um, I do think that you know especially if the Red Wings retain him at half fifty uh, percent, um, then he's at two point seven five uh, mm-hmm. for his cap hit. There's a team that would give up a, a pretty penny for that, especially if there's multiple buyers. So I think a first round pick, you know, a lot of people out there seem to think otherwise, but I definitely think a first round pick is doable uh, for Nick Letty. And he's somebody that if he goes to the right situation, he could sign an extension with that team. He's, he's you know, he's still got three or four years left before he's thinking about retirement. So, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't, I don't think he wants to move around a ton. So um, I could see him signing a deal with the team he ends up going to. Um, Nemesnikov, the last two times he was traded at the deadline, he was traded for a fourth round pick. Now, I think that given his production this season and given the marketplace and given um, how many buyers there potentially will be and um, all sorts of other factors, I think a third round pick is doable for, Nemes- for Nemesnikov, potentially a second if it really becomes like a, a bidding war. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I, would, I would stick at a third round pick for Nemesnikov hoping for a second. And then my last one I'll throw out, you you just kind of briefly mentioned him there, uh, Kyle. Uh, it would be Mark Stahl. Um, mm-hmm. He's got some trade protection in his contract, so he'll he'll ultimately dictate where he does or doesn't go. But he's another one of those guys that, you know, you're not going to get a first-round pick from Mark Stahl, but you can get a nice, you know, third- or fourth-round pick for him. And he's nice defensive bottom-pairing depth for, mm-hmm. you know, a championship team. And he's he's somebody that, at this point in his career, probably wants to have a good run at the Stanley Cup. So I think yeah. that, honestly, it's – it's a uh, if Mark Stahl is going to have that opportunity, I think now is the time and the Red Wings should, uh, should jump at the opportunity to move him to a contender. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think Mark Stahl is definitely in the in conversation again this year. He's had another solid year. Uh, he's come yeah. over to Detroit and played very, very consistently, very solid in on a team that has had its struggles and has gone back and forth over the last two years. They're in, the, they're in a rebuilding stage and Mark Stahl's at the end of his career, but he's done a fantastic job in the role that he's been asked to do. And I think you're absolutely right. If you were to put him on a team that has a little bit more firepower on the back end, he'd be a perfect third pairing um, and would add that depth, that experience to any type of team trying to make a, a push here. Um, two more names I'd like to kind of throw out at you that I think could maybe garner a fourth, uh, possibly a fifth and a little extra uh, could be Troy Stetcher yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, Adam Ernie. I think those yeah. are two names that could uh, potentially be moved for some uh, smaller type deals, shall we say. Yeah. Uh, but I think those are two two guys that could be moved to make space for the future of the wings and and get a decent return on that. And I think getting a fourth or a fifth for both those guys would be a pretty, pretty good return at this stage in their career. Well, if uh, if if. Yep. Uh, if Ernie starts to push towards those 50 goals, then we can, we can start talking about a higher pick. So let's get going at him. Let's get going. I, I knew I shouldn't have brought up Ernie's name, but since I already brought up the 50 goals earlier, I figured. I would, but, um, you got it in my head, man. You got it in my head. <laughs> it will live there forever. Trust me. All right. Moving on. Uh, the fourth period reports that, uh, teams are interested in Tyler Bertuzzi. Should Detroit move Tyler Bertuzzi? And if so, what type of return would you expect for that? Uh, so, Devin, I'm going to start with you this time. Should Detroit move Tyler Bertuzzi? There's reports that many teams are looking into him. And if you do, what are you expecting? Well, I this is a situation where I would love to be a fly on the wall because I want to know <laughs> – how much like you know how serious yeah. this interest is yeah. and i want to know like it, how much are teams actually willing to to part with for this guy because you know yeah. it, just in, in a um in a vacuum here looking at bertuzzi's season he's having a phenomenal season he's having a career year point per game player he plays yeah. playoff style hockey um you know like i said in a vacuum uh, he could get a nice return and a kind of return a team like Detroit should be jumping on, um, especially considering Bertuzzi's 27. So theoretically, uh, by the time the Red Wings are challenging for Stanley Cups, Bertuzzi's probably not going to be, uh, you know, in that group that's pushing the team yep. uh, towards that. 
So, you know, I'm interested in shopping him, but I want to know how serious this interest is because, you know, we've talked about this on the show before his, his vaccination status. It's, it's a, uh, it's a hurdle, especially for teams that could potentially play like Toronto in the first round, yeah. um, Edmonton, so on and so forth. It's, it's something you have to consider. And if, if, if it's coming from a team that doesn't necessarily have to worry about that, then, uh, I, I definitely want to hear what the offer is. I, I, I'm I'm going to say I'm not actively, you know, planning on trading Bertuzzi, but if the right offer is there and they're willing to do it this season of all seasons, why not? That's a great point. That's a great point that you have. Uh, Matt, over to you. Do you think if that's with the reports coming out that teams are interested in Tyler Bertuzzi, that Detroit should move him? And if they do, what are you expecting back if you are Detroit's general manager? Well, I mean, this really, Devin put a great point there about his vaccination status. I mean, this is going to cut your, you know, partners uh, quite a bit, especially teams that are in, like you say, Toronto. It's a big one. Um, they're looking for forwards. They've been in the JT Miller talk as well. And uh, Bertuzzi would definitely be a guy they'd want to, yeah. you know, potentially push him over the top in the playoffs because he is. He definitely plays that playoff style hockey. Um, you know, to, is he on the market? Maybe. Um, but I mean, the thing is, is he's had such a great season. And I think this is a guy that the Red Wings, would, I think, should still keep around as part of the core. I mean, this is a, this is a guy that's fit in. He's developed there really well. Um, you know, but if he is on the market, uh, you know, this return should be substantial. I think, um, to, just because of his performance this year and, uh, and the potential he still has, he's not old. He's still in that good range of age and he's not getting paid a ton. I don't believe, right. Yep. His contract's yep. not crazy. Um, so, I mean, this is a, this is something you could get, first round pick you can get a high you know blue chip prospect back in return for him i think that's the range i've been accused of overvaluing guys in the past <laughs> you know uh, especially in canuck land here with miller but i think i think you have to at least say you, we want a first round pick for this guy i mean oh absolutely yeah come on i mean he's not a veteran he's not a guy that's going to be that's over the hill and yeah. So definitely first round pick. And I even say throw in a blue chip prospect, you know, at least a mid range guy that, you know, has some potential. So, but I mean, we'll see, we'll see what happens a lot with these guys that never come to pass whenever these rumors are, but we'll see. Well, the good news for you is JT Miller is probably like the second or third highest free agent right now, I'd say behind like Claude Giroux and Chikorin. And so uh, yeah. the fact that he's going to get a return, if they end up moving him, it's going to make you look much better in that regard. So, you know, kudos, yeah. kudos yeah. to you for being on the sell high <laughs> on him all year. Cause he's been having a fantastic season too. And, and it looks like he'll be uh, moved for quite a bit of return yeah. Um, yeah. for, yeah, for what it's worth, I believe the Red Wings should hold on to uh, Bertuzzi. I think if they are going to shop him and if teams are legitimately interested in him, I think you should absolutely pick up that phone and listen. Um, I would expect a type of return that uh, the Wings got for Mantha last season, you know, yeah. getting a Verona yeah. type players to yeah. almost a one for one on a type of player, plus a couple of picks, uh, whether it's, you know, a first and a couple seconds or first, you know, second and a couple thirds or whatever that package is. I think it's going to come with um, another player that's somewhat uh, established or starting to be established and then some high draft picks, just like you said, Matt. So um, yeah. great. Oh, go ahead, Devin. <laughs> And I just want to throw out real quick that this isn't a move that I think you make lightly. Um, yeah. The coach Larkin, everybody on that team talks about how Bertuzzi is one of the most well-liked guys in that room. And especially, you know, coming from the captain, you, you want to have those guys in the locker room. So if you are going to move him, it's gotta be for like a Mantha esque return to where it's, it's too yes. good to pass up. You can't just like rush this basically. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's a great spot to take our first break. Uh, so don't forget to sign up to the morning skate, the hockey writers daily morning newsletter. You can sign up at morningskate.io. Just put in your email, hit submit. You'll be added to our list and every morning, Monday through Friday at 8am Eastern sharp. 
I will be sending you an email to your <laughs> inbox and you will get all of our updated uh, hockey news, quizzes, funnies. You know, we try to make it lighthearted. We try to, we touch on uh, real subjects. We try to do a little bit of everything, but if nothing else, we try to entertain you by bringing hockey news to you Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern in your inbox for free. Sign up morningskate.io. All right. Bills paid, so let's move on, staying with the theme of fantasy GM. Who is one realistic player you would like to see Detroit acquire, either now or during the offseason? Uh, I'm going to go first on this one just because this is someone I brought up last week or the, two weeks ago uh, when I was on the podcast, and I missed last week as at a hockey tournament. Um, and I feel like it's kind of a low-hanging fruit, so that's why I wanted to jump on it because I see Devin over there nodding. I think we might have the same idea, so I'll just I'll keep it simple and then I'll kick it over to him. But I'm going to go with Thomas Hurdle. I think he's the type of player that can be plugged into your top two lines uh, and really almost make a more dangerous second line into a one, a one B type. Um, you know, you have Larkin and Bertuzzi and Raymond on one line with hurdle and Verana and whoever else you want to throw up there to just crash the net. I mean, it, at that point it doesn't matter. Right. Um, so I'm going to go, I, I would like to see uh, Thomas hurdle uh, from the San Jose sharks and Devin, I will let you elaborate and, or, uh, Tell me why I'm wrong with your pick. Um, who would you like to see the Red Wings acquire either at the trade deadline or this offseason? Well, I definitely don't think you're wrong. I, I'm, I'm smiling here because I, I, I was hoping you were going to say hurdle because I, I kind of planned around the idea that you were going to say hurdle. So I, I, <laughs> I, I gave you a hurdle to jump over. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. yes. And we, right, wow. oh, yeah. <laughs> yikes. All right. Uh, it's not the hockey. I what, I, someone so has to pick joke, up right? Pat Slack. <laughs> yeah. 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 You are owning it. Well, my friend. All right. Uh, I've got, I've got three players. I want to throw out real quickly. I'm not going to elaborate too much on them. Uh, one. Uh, and I mentioned this in the comments section uh, on last week's show. Uh, pleasure talking to you all out there. Um, Hampus Lindholm from the Anaheim Ducks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that whether that's now or during free agency, I think that that is somebody that I am like circling on my chart, bolding, doing all the things. I'm I'm going to give him a good off offer to try to get him to come to Detroit. Uh, we talk, you know, about how the defense is kind of letting this team down this year. Um, and while the team's biggest depth in the prospect pool is on defense, those kids still need time. And I think Campus Lindholm um, checks a lot of boxes for this team. And I think it'd be, it'd be really, uh, really uh, beneficial for the team to bring him on. Two more, uh, Marty Natchez. I don't know if he's that realistic, but he's, he's a player that I've loved since his draft year. Uh, he's with the Carolina Hurricanes. I think you'd have to do a big type of deal to get him. Um, but playing him with Vrana and Zadina on one line, Oh boy, that 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 just that gives me uh, tingles <laughs> in all the right places. Um, and then, last but not least, uh, is a Michigan native, and this comes off of the back of a report. I don't remember who said this, but apparently, the Blackhawks are looking to sell pretty much everybody besides Seth Jones, Jonathan Taze, and Patrick Kane. So I want to see them go after Alex DeBrinket because Alex DeBrinket mm. is a 40 goal scorer as a yeah. 20, what, four year old, 25. Yep, He's yeah. not that old. He's from Michigan. He's skill, skill, skill. <laughs> um, you can put him on a line with Larkin. You can put him on a line with damn near anybody and he's going to make the line <laughs> better. So I, I, and at, and at this point, I think the Red Wings could make a very, very good offer for him that I think would at least give the Blackhawks pause and consider it. I don't know if they actually take it, but they would consider it. Yeah. Interesting choices. I like all of those names. I think any one of those would make Detroit a lot more dynamic, which is uh, hard to say this season with how dynamic they have been. So yeah. uh, very good choices, Devin. I'd be excited to see them go after any one of those. Uh, Matthew, how about you? Detroit GM hat on. You are acquiring someone at the trade deadline and or in the offseason. Who is it and why? Well, like Devin, I got a, a few names I want to throw out. And of course, no copying. This is great. Ooh, um, good. <laughs> I got the first, first one I got is Victor Olofsson uh, from the okay. Buffalo Sabres. Okay. Um, 
This is a guy that's kind of fallen off a bit uh, since he was a power play guy. He was scoring so many power play goals off of Sam Reinhardt's passes. And this is, you know, if you can go to a team that can start feeding him the puck on the power play like that again, and the Red Wings have a guy in Lucas Raymond who could potentially do that and even more at Cider. I mean, setting him up for one-timers and he's not old. I'm pretty sure he's only like 26, 25, yeah. 26. Um, again, checks the boxes of uh, Detroit Red Wings. Love their Swedes. <laughs> Olsen, <laughs> they, you know, he's in there. Um, you know, I, I think he'd be a great fit in Detroit. And he probably wouldn't cost a lot because of, you know, yeah. his production's kind of gone down. Um, so, yeah. Uh, another guy, Lawson Krause from the Arizona Coyotes. He's That's been in the one. trade rumors a lot. Uh, he's, again, young guy, having a great season in Arizona. And Arizona looks like they're selling off a lot of their guys as yeah. well. Um, great fit, I think, on the Red Wings with the skill they've, they've got coming up. And he would be part of that core group, too, because he's not on the old side. Um, last is Jack Roslevic, um, over in the Columbus Ooh. and RFA, uh, coming up as well. Um, he had such a great season with Columbus last year when he came over and the trade with the Winnipeg Jets and he's not doing as well, uh, with the new coach. And so, I mean, he may need a change of scenery. Uh, he's not the head, you know, he's not the main guy there. And that's what the thing he was when he was traded there. He seemed to fitting in on the top line. They're not sure if he's a centerman or a winger. It's all over the place. So I think he may need to change the scenery. I think the Red Wings may, may be a great fit for him as well. I don't know what he would cost. He'd probably cost quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I, I think the Red Wings would do well to have any of those guys. And just quickly, the last is Jeff Petrie from the Montreal Canadiens. Because, again, need defense. Uh, he's kind of fallen off in Montreal. But, I mean, he's still a great defenseman and, uh, you know, but I think he'd cost quite a bit. <laughs> Pe Petrie is an, another, yeah, another guy with Michigan roots, went to Michigan State. So, uh, yeah. you know, get get the guys, bring them home. But um, I think you're right. Yeah, there are some of those guys that might cost a little bit more. But the good news is Detroit's in the best situation with how much cap space they have. They can go out yep. and spend a little more if they need to. Uh, and there's a chance they might free up a little more cap space in the upcoming weeks with the trade deadline. So uh, stick tuned. Trade deadline's coming up in the next three weeks, I believe. It's right around the corner. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then shortly after that, after the season, the, the free agents, uh, period is always a fun, fun period to watch. And I know we always have fun at the hockey writers behind the scenes and our, our channels talking about who's going to go where. So, uh, that's always a fun, uh, season after the season, shall yeah. we say. And, uh, and sometimes crazy stuff happens while we're recording a show, right? Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is true. Yeah. Especially on either draft day or, uh, <laughs> on trade deadline day. So just tune into exactly, our show yeah. for all the updates yeah <laughs> so speaking of our podcast what would a detroit red wings podcast be this season without talking about zadina so oh. zadina has actually been playing really well on the top line with larkin and raymond but Verona's on his way back is that mm. going to be a cause for concern when Verona returns what are we going to do with zadina matt i'm going to start with you when Verona returns, is that going to change the dynamics of the Red Wings' first line? Well, I mean, Zadina's kind of started to fit in there, right? Uh, but, I mean, some fans would say he's increasing his trade value. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. if they want to get rid of him, it, this is, uh, yeah. he's, you know, so high. Um, but, I mean, he again, he's a young guy. Uh, I still say that they... they you know, they drafted him over Hughes, which is great. So uh, that, that one was, that's always a good thing. <laughs> they wouldn't have drafted him. Hughes is probably the guy. So, I, but yeah, I'm joking. It's like, um, I think. Why do we let a Canucks guy talk about Zadina? What did we do? I <laughs> uh, guess we're not hitting a thousand views this week. <laughs> uh... <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, um, yeah. So, but yeah. It, I think when Verona does come back, um, he's going to be in that top six, right? So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. It depends on if Zadina can keep it going. I think you keep him on the top line as long as that line's going. Um, again, increase trade value or whatever. Or maybe he's, you know, you, he turns a corner and he becomes, 
what he's supposed to be because he, I mean, he has that scoring potential. He's a very skilled guy. I still think he, yeah, he was drafted, you know, high, but a lot of people had him there. So, I mean, it's not yeah. like he's a guy that teams wouldn't have picked him at that point. So, um, if you, if he's good and playing well there, you keep him. you keep a good thing going because, um, and Verona can definitely fit in somewhere else. It's not like you will. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think you definitely keep him on that top line, even when uh, Verona comes back. Great insight. Thank you, Matt. Devin, how about you? Zadina has been playing really well on that top line with uh, Larkin and Raymond. Do you keep him there or how does he factor when Verona comes back? Well, it ultimately depends on Vrana because um, does he come back and he's feeling 100%, he's, he's ready to rock and roll, then maybe you put him in a position to where he's playing, you know, he's playing on the top line because you want to get him like, you know, you want to unleash the beast. But if he's, if you're getting him into the lineup and he's still kind of feeling his way, he's not, he's not quite 100%. Um, and, you, you know, it's, you know, we talked about this a week or two ago where, um, you know, it, it might take him a couple games to sort of get into the rhythm of things. Maybe you start Rana lower in the lineup and let Zadina c- to continue, you know, doing what he's doing on the top line. I think that for me personally, uh, <laughs> well, a couple things come to mind here. One, since the day Lucas Raymond became a Detroit Red Wing, I've always envisioned Zadina and Raymond playing opposite each other because I mm-hmm. feel like they just kind of could play well off of each other. Um, especially with a center like Larkin between them. Um, and to kind of see Zadina all of a sudden playing well, it's like, well, yep, go figure. <laughs> um, That's what I said. <laughs> but, uh, but also, um, you know, we, there is, there is, there is a reason why we keep talking about Zadina. It's because for the first half of the season, he was basically invisible. And where was he yeah. playing? He was playing on the second and the third line. So what do you think is going to happen if you take him off the first line? Probably going to go invisible again, um, yeah. unless he's unless the lines get switched up in a way to where he's still playing with good talent. Maybe if he's playing with Bertuzzi, he might still put up some points. But I I think that unless your plan is is to trade Zadina, I think you need to keep him going. Otherwise, you risk ruining him. And he's yeah. finally playing good this season, so let him continue to play good, even though you've got Vrana coming in. If Vrana's on your third line, I realize people hate that idea but you've got some offensive depth because a guy like Vrana should not be on the third line. And if that's just how it rolls, because that's how your lines are sitting, then I think you can feel pretty good about your lineup. Absolutely. And and think about all the, the extra offensive chances he will get playing on the third line versus playing against the top six shutdown center. So, I mean, and that's partially why I think they do need to start him lower in the lineup because yep. he is going to need some time to get going. Yeah. And you don't want to have him facing Victor Hedman and uh, Adam Fox and all the top defenders. You want to have him facing yeah. the lower part of the depth chart. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Final topic of the day. Keeping our uh, GM hats on. We're looking at just after the deadline, Detroit has made a couple of moves, freed up some space. What prospect would you like to see the Red Wings get a look at following that trade deadline shakeup? And Devin, I will start with you. I'm going to throw out two names real quick here. One, well, it, it, this will depend on whether or not he crosses the pond or not. Of course, it depends <laughs> on the season over in Sweden. <laughs> But I want to see Albert Johansson. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay, oh, well, okay. hey, uh, sure, uh, I'm a big Johansson fan. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll get on that trade too. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I thought we were getting another another. Uh, Edvinson, is that you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got no, a little uh, ahead of myself. Sorry. Yo, yo, <laughs> Uh, no, Johansson very well might be my train for next season. We'll see. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I like I'm, that. I, I, I just want to see where he's at. And I think that uh, <laughs> if, if the opportunity is yeah. there, I'd like to see. Um, and then the other one, and this is the low hanging fruit. And I'm sure, you know, you guys can repeat it. Um, Bergeron. Uh, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's, uh, yeah. he's basically producing at a point per game in the AHL. And uh, even if it's just for nine games, I want to see what he can do in the NHL. I want to see if he's actually ready. Cause he's looking like it. Yeah, absolutely. I think he he's at least earned the look if it's just for a game or two to get up and get his feet wet and, you know, have that cup of coffee this year. So next year he knows what it takes and he can come prepared coming into the training camp. 
Absolutely. Matthew, last word on today's show, our guest. Thank you for joining us. Who would you like to see? You are our prospects guy. Give us a name of someone that you would love to see come up in Detroit and get a couple of games this year and get a real good look. Well, obviously, Bergeron's a big name for me. I mean, he's so exciting. Um, but that's easy. I mean, anyone else that. <laughs> <laughs> he's just such an exciting, exciting prospect. Oh, and uh, yeah, I, I, my last when I was head before Peter, I did that hundred. And left him off the list. So I I apologize to all Detroit Red Wings fans. I left him it was off the top 100 <laughs> last year. So that and now he's back on it. I believe Peter's got him there somewhere. So, uh, but yeah, there's the motivation I, he I, needed. Gonna, yeah, yeah, he gets the there you go. Gets the boost. Um, I'm gonna say a guy that's kind of maybe going starting to become a fringe guy that you're not sure about. He's leading the. Grand Rapids Griffins in scoring, Taro Hirose. Um, yeah. You know, he's he's done really well in the AHL, but can't seem to get a foothold in the NHL. I think he's played, played a couple games this year, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I mean, again, he's an undersized guy. You know, his skill level, he's got, he's got great playmaking skills. He can seem to be able to run a power play, at least in the AHL. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, he doesn't seem to be able to gain – much of a foothold in the NHL, either if he that he's not getting a chance because of the strength of the prospects that the Red Wings have, um, that could be and that he's he may need to be traded to get something you know, going into another organization. But I'd like him to get given a chance to kind of do something. I don't know if he's even given yeah. much of a chance yet. Um, but you know he's proven in the AHL. But it, you know with those guys, they may actually just be AHL guys. Um, yeah, can only produce there. There's plenty of them in the NHL and, and, you know, the AHL, like, you know, they produce so much in the AHL, they get the NHL and they can't do it. So I'd like him to be given a chance to do it at least. So Hiroshi is my guy, um, apart from Bergen. I, I think you, yeah, brought up a great point. Just let him see what he can do. You have all these uh, talented young guys coming up. You know, a lot of them are, are getting to be to that NHL ready uh, caliber why not take a look at the guys that you know are AHL products and see if they can make that jump? Because like you said, a lot of times that just doesn't happen. There, there are some really, really good AHL players that just could never uh, catch on in the NHL, and that's just part of the way that, that the sport works. So um, great insight. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, that is our show. But before we go, in case we have not convinced you with our first two plugs, sign up. For the Morning Skate newsletter, morningskate.io. You can find it down there. You can follow me on Twitter. I'll I'll send you there. There's probably a link in my bio. If not, there will be tonight. Um, (laughs) Sign up, Morning Skate. M-O-R-I-N. Yes, M-O-R-N-I-N-G-S-K-A-T-E dot I-O. Put your email in. And uh, every day, Monday through Friday, for free to your inbox, courtesy of the hockey writers that uh, once again, that is the grind line. Thank you, Matt, Mr. Uh, Matt Zator, Zator. Sorry. Um, thank you for joining us. Where can everyone follow you? Follow me on Twitter. Uh, Matthew Zator, Zator SC at that. Uh, yeah. It's the same my email, but yeah, that's the Twitter. <laughs> Matthew Zator, love it. SC. Love it. <laughs> Th- threw him a curveball and he didn't know what no, to do. Love it. No. Devin, where can no, everyone follow sending- you? <laughs> At, uh, at Hockey with Devin right down there. Yeah, yeah. If you if you want to send your fan mail, send them to Matt's email. <laughs> Excellent. And you can follow me at THW underscore NOP on Twitter. Again, thank you for joining us. And this has been the Hockey Writers Grindline.